The concepts we'll cover in today's podcast may contain general financial advice, so you should consider whether the information is appropriate to your needs. Gig Super is a corporate authorised representative of Grow Super AFSL Pricer Limited, and their product is expected to launch to the public in December 2019. Before making a decision, you should consider their product disclosure statement, which will be available on their website once they've launched, and if appropriate, seek professional advice from a financial and or tax advisor. Are you a solopreneur looking to two times your revenue to fund your lifestyle and give back? Well, this podcast is for you. We bring you inspirational guests sharing actionable tips to solve many of the struggles you face each and every day. And now over to your host, Paul Higgins. Hello to the Build Live Give podcast. If you're a first time listener, welcome. And if you're a regular, thanks for your support. I'd love to hear your feedback. Just email me at paul at build live give.com. Our guest today is someone who grew up in a very entrepreneurial family and then he went to uni and then went into corporate but he realized that corporate was actually stopping him from spending more time with his family so he left set up a consulting business and then came across a huge opportunity in the market so what he does now is help self-employed people to contribute to their super and he goes into a lot of detail about that and why it's so beneficial so why listen to this one is the three reasons why self-employed people under contribute and how to solve this. The second is the tax benefits of super, and the third is how to play to your strengths. So at the end, I'll give you my top three takeaways as well, but what I'll do now is hand you over to Peter Stanhope from Gig Super. Welcome, Peter Stanhope from Gig Super to the Build, Live, Give podcast. Great to have you on, Peter. Paul, thanks very much for having us. Really excited to be here. Excellent. So I know we're going to get to know lots about you today, but why don't we start with something that your family or friends would know about you that we may not? Oh, look, I'd have to say for me, um, my favourite place in the bookstore is always the self-help section. Um, I, I got started in the in the self-help world uh, when I was about 18 years old uh, and someone gave me a cassette tape of seven habit, habits of, of highly effective people. Um, and yeah, I guess that sort of started for me a lifelong, uh, fascination with, you know, analyzing myself and, and trying to work out ways to get better. Well, I, I must admit I was about the same age when I read that book and I still read my personal summary out of that book every, every morning, a uh, personal reflection. So, um, yeah, look, it's had a huge impact on, on me as well. And, um, I certainly, when I was in corporate, put a lot of people through the course as well. Did you ever do the course? that accompanied the book? No, I, did, I never did the course. Um, but yeah, I've certainly got still things that, you know, loop through my mind almost on a, on a, on a daily basis um, from that. Um, you know, there, there was one about habits and he talks about like, you know, habits are a space, like a spaceship taking off from Earth and the hardest part is, is breaking through orbit. And, uh, you know, I think about that, I think about that uh, almost on a daily basis and much to my, uh, I also tell my kids about it and uh, my, my wife uh, rolls her eyes every time I do. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think when I finally left Coke, people were very happy because uh, <laughs> they, they didn't want to belong to the cold anymore. But I actually took it that far that when I left Coke, I went and worked for them. And uh, it was interesting what they, they were bought by a, uh, another company. And that company was uh, very much, uh, was a private equity company, very much around the return. And what they practiced versus what they preach was two different things. So that was a bit of an eye opener for me. And um, your great journey, and I know, you know, you're just about on launching that, that huge journey or have launched it, but tell me a little bit about how you got into running your own business. Yeah, so I guess my, my parents were self-employed. And so I think I was always born with that itch to go out on my own, um, you know, it sort of sat inside me. Um, but like most people, um, I went off to uni um, and then fell into the into the corporate world. And so I spent the first part of my career working in the online share trading space. But, you know, probably similar to your experience, um, you know, working for a big corporate and seeing your kids aren't necessarily two things that go together. Yes. Um, and so myself and, a, and another colleague, um, stepped out on our own and, um, started a consulting business. Um, and it was, 
um, I guess through that, that we then, you know, ended up on this journey of where we are today of, of, of trying to fix superannuation for, for self-employed people. Great. And we're going to go into that in a lot more detail in a moment, but I always ask people when you've, you know, first took that step, was it harder or easier than you expected? Um, I think sometimes in life, it's, it's not about finding the right answers, but asking yourself the right questions. And, you know, it's probably for me been as hard as I expected it to be, but that difficulty hasn't bothered me nearly as much as I thought it would. Um, in fact, I'd say in a way it's, it's actually quite addictive because I find that, you know, I use, um, you know, a lot more of myself, um, in a way that I could never do if I was still working in a, in, in a big corporate. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously never easy. Um, but at the same time, incredibly fulfilling. Yeah. And, you know, take us to a time where you might have been you know, back up against the wall, thought, mm, you know what, maybe corporate is the right option for me. Um, take us to that moment and, and how did you pull yourself through it? Yeah. So for us, that was, um, you know, about a, oh, eight months into the, into the journey. Um, and, you know, we built up this um, consulting business um, and then uh, it looked like it was all about to, uh, all about to change. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, to have a business partner and having that business partner, um, as well as an incredibly supportive wife, uh, were probably the two things for me that, that saw me through, um, that, that period. And I, I certainly couldn't be where I, where I am today without, without, you know, both, uh, Martin, my business partner and Zoe, my wife, uh, about, without their support. Yeah, brilliant. And um, other mentors or other support that you've got through this period? Yeah, I, look, I, I um, you know, probably back in about 2010 was when I was working in corporate and, and sort of trying to work out what I was going to, going to do with myself. And I was chatting to a friend and, and, and he asked me the question. He said, well, what makes you tick? And I couldn't answer him. So it was at that point I thought, oh, well, I've really, got to, I've really got to figure out the answer to that question. Um, before I can work out what I want to do with myself next. Um, and so in order to answer that question, along with the self-help um, side of things, I actually went off and, and, and did some um, career coaching. Ah, yes. And for me, that was a really valuable um, experience, um, you know, on a number of, on a number of levels. Um, you know, it helped me work out what my strengths are and, and what my weaknesses are. And also helped me to put in place systems um, to, um, you know, I guess play to my um, strengths and 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 minimise my weaknesses. You know, I think through that process, I also gained a lot of confidence um, because you you know you realise that it's okay not to be good at everything, um, mm. and you don't have to try to be good at everything. Um, you know, it's no, no one in this world is, but it's about it's about understanding what you're good at, um, and then. Uh, once you've understood that, you know, you can play to those strengths. Great. And no doubt some of your strengths we're going to go into now in the build section. So when someone comes up to you and says, hey, Peter, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that? <laughs> Real conversation killer. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tell them I work in superannuation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a couple of industries below that, like, you know, but and I won't mention them in case I can <laughs> I'm listening right now. Yeah. That's why I took a pause. <laughs> but yeah, so so when uh, people you know know you work in super and they do still stay in the conversation, what do you say then? Yeah, I mean, it, um, I normally ask them if they're uh, if they're self employed um, because you know if they're self employed, they they get the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, whereas if they're an employee often they don't really understand the problem because they've never really had to think about super, um, which is kind of why the problem exists um, in, in the first place. If you've never had to, if you've been an employee your whole life, you've never had to think about it. And so if they are a self-employed person, I usually like to use them as a mini focus group um, and, um, and, you know, start drilling them with questions about, you know, their relationship with money and their relationship with, um, with superannuation, which is probably why they'd 
after about 10 minutes, decide they want to go and talk to someone else at the barbecue. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and of those people you talk to, how many people actually have, as a sole, um, solepreneur who, you know, people listening here or self-employed person, how many people don't have super that you come across? Well, most of them have super. So most of them have, I mean, similar to my journey, you know, grown up in, in a corporate um, and then, you know, at some point in their lives for various reasons decided they wanted to step out on their own. Um, so most of them have super, but most of them aren't contributing to mm. super currently because, you know, they don't understand it um, because, um, you know, they've got cash flows that fluctuate and it's sort of difficult putting that money aside for, for, for a long period of time. And, you know, it's a, it's a complex, it's, it's, it's not built for them superannuation was built for employees um, primarily um, and so you know for them trying to delve into this world um, with a lot of complexity in it um, is, is is difficult yeah so if we take each of those uh, one at a time so the understanding piece what what's the stuff that they normally don't understand and how do you help them understand that yes yeah, so I, I, look I'd say most people understand that super is a way to help you save for when you can no longer work, most likely when you're old. Um, so most people understand that. What most people don't understand um, is that the tax rates inside super are much lower. Um, and so, um, you know, if you're investing and saving outside super, you pay tax on those investments at your marginal tax rate, um, which for the average Australian is 32.5%. Um, for a high income earner, um, it's 45%. Versus inside super, it's 15% tax rate. So, you know, there's a big tax advantage to doing it. And sorry, Peter, just to quickly ask you, because I know there's a lot of people listening right now that are from different parts of the world. You know, is this a similar thing in most countries that there is such a difference or is it uh, uh, unique to Australia? No, I mean, look, all, uh, well, most of our, most of the, you know, English speaking, um, you know, first world countries have a pension scheme of some, some sort, you know, in the UK, they all call it, all, all call it different things. Um, but essentially they amount to the same thing, which is, you put aside money for your retirement and the government incentivizes that by reducing the amount of tax um, that you pay. Yes. And the reason they incentivize that is because they don't want to have to pay you a pension. And in fact, they may not be able to afford to pay you a pension um, by the time you reach your retirement. So there's a, there's an incentive there for the government to, to offer that tax advantage. Great. And uh, so that's the understanding piece, cash flow. Just tell me a little bit more around the cash flow and why that sometimes stops people investing or contributing to super with running their own business. Yeah, so there's sort of two elements, I guess, to the, to the cash flow part. Um, first, quite often people tie saving for retirement to something that they'll do once they become successful. But what you should do is, is tie it to something that you need to do in order to become successful. Um, you know, it's part of being successful as a self-employed person because, you know, putting that money aside on a regular basis um, is going to mean that you're um, ultimately not suffering from, you know, guilt and anxiety and all those other sorts of emotions that might make you make, you know, short-term decisions in your business. So, you know, that's the first part to it. But I guess unlike employees, we don't have the luxury of knowing exactly how much money is going to be in the bank every month. Um, so, you know, we'll be, um, you know, receiving money in our bank account and that fluctuates from month to month in line with the performance of our business. And so, you know, taking some of that money and then putting it straight into super becomes really difficult because once that money goes in, um, it can't come out again until you can no longer work, um, which is most likely when you're old. Mm -hmm. So that becomes, you know, really difficult for people to make that short term sacrifice um, to, to access that longer term tax benefit. 
Yeah, and I look, I definitely, um, I see that in a lot, you know, from my corporate days, probably similar to you, you know, really had to know my, my numbers. And I asked so many, um, particularly coaches and consultants that I come across that have had a really good corporate background, but now running their own business that they just don't know their numbers as well as they can. And then that makes it hard. I think A is tax. So making sure that when the BAS statement or that's in Australia, the but the income statement comes in from the government to, to get paid back the tax that you've got some there. And by the sounds of it, you should also be doing a similar thing for super. But I think one of the big things is knowing your numbers. So if you're listening now and you don't know your numbers and the accountant isn't someone helping you, there's a lot of great people out there, whether they're virtual CFOs, uh, business coaches, mentors that can help you understand your numbers. And I think it's also about the business model, which you know we fully endorse a recurring income model. So you may not get as much cash flow up front, but at least you'll know exactly how much you're going to earn or get very close to what you earn. And I think they're two key things that can help with the cash flow. Have you seen instances of that, uh, Peter, or have you got any other points to, to build on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think they're, they're absolutely two. Um, a third one that I'd add um, is the power of buckets. So, you know, it's it if you if you've got you know all of your money sitting in the one bank account, and um, you know in that bank account you've got your savings for um, a house, you've got your savings for a holiday, um, and you've got your you know everyday operating expenses all sitting in there, washing around in that one account, mm. you're going to find it very very difficult um, to separate one dollar from the next, and so spending that money. Um, becomes a lot easier. Whereas if you do create buckets for yourself and separate out your money, then, you know, if you've got money sitting there in your retirement savings bucket and your house saving bucket or your, you know, your tax bucket for your, um, you know, your quarterly BAS obligations, um, and then you go and spend that money on a trip to Bali, you know, you're going to feel totally different about spending that money um, than you would as if it's, if it's all washing around in the one, in the one account. Um, so, you know, Buckets can be a really good way to, you know, sort of tip your behavioural biases um, in your own favour. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, and I, you know, I do have people that have either got personal uh, debt or company debt. What do you say about those people that are sort of sitting here listening maybe, well, this all sounds great, but I've already got those debt commitments. Mm. How do I balance that versus my super? Yeah, and I mean that, that's a that's a really difficult question to answer, and it's not a it's by no means a one size fits all. Um, and that you know, back to your point earlier of there's lots of people out there that can help you work through those things. You know, that's where your accountant or your financial planner or somebody else that's a trusted advisor in that space can can help you answer those can those help you answer those questions. Yeah, and I forget. Uh, I think it was around two percent. Something like that of uh, people in Australia actually have a financial planner. I don't know if you've got any more updated stats to that. No, I don't. And, it, you know, financial planning is in a really interesting space here in Australia. Um, you know, post the Royal Commission, there was obviously a lot of scrutiny around financial planners' um, business models. Mm. And I think that is an industry that's, that's, that's quickly um, evolving. And there's a huge opportunity there. And, you know, people see robo-advice as being you know, where basically machines answer these questions for you. But the problem with machines answering these questions, uh, on the surface, it's, it looks great. But we're talking, about, we're talking about very human things when we start to talk about, um, you know, things like risk. Like what is your appetite for risk? And, you know, answering that to a computer is going to be a very different experience to answering that with a human and, and talking through what that risk means. Mm. Um, and, and that's the challenge that... Um, advice faces is how do I, how do I, how do I do things in a scalable way, but in a way that still actually means I can, I can get, you know, human um, data and human connection um, in that, in that advice process. Yeah. And, and I think around that advice piece, I know I was always taught to have your four buckets. Like you mentioned uh, my four buckets were always cash, super property and shares. So yep. there were four buckets that I was always, uh, especially with my father, always mentioned to, to to make sure you spread your risk across those. For people that are saying, well, look, you know, I, I think I can direct invest in shares. I can handle my own property. Why, why would I want to put money into super? What would be your response to that? 
Yes, yeah, so, I mean, there's um, there isn't a one size fits all, um, but the yeah the big benefit to super, which is not a benefit that you can get, you know, with the other asset classes, um, is the tax um, advantage. You know that you're getting fifteen percent versus everything else. You're going to pay your marginal tax rate on, uh, and the the compounding effect of that over a lifetime of work is enormous. Um, you know that 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 has a really significant impact um, on the amount that you'll have in retirement. Great, and the third one you mentioned. So we we talked about understanding cash flow, and the third one was complexity. Mm. What uh, what are the key things that you know about complexity, or what are some of the key challenges, and how you know how to solve those for some of your clients? Yeah, so I guess getting back to that barbecue conversation before, right? Every every now and again, I'll run into somebody who is self-employed and is currently contributing to super. And the next question um, that I'll ask them is, well, are you claiming those contributions as a tax deduction? And it's usually at that point that they walk away and find someone else to talk to. But um, (laughs) (laughs) um, the, the, the thing that people often miss um, uh, and as again, it's not their fault. You know, the system wasn't designed for them is that when an employer puts money into super on behalf of their employee, that money is automatically by default taxed at 15%. But when you're self-employed and you put money into superannuation, you've still got to pay tax on that money at your marginal tax rate when you do your end of year tax return by default. If you want to instead have that money taxed at 15% versus having that money taxed at your marginal tax rate, you need to go through the process of claiming that money as a tax deduction. And so often the, 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 if they're still with me at the barbecue, they'll say, well, how do, I, how, do I, how do I do that? Is it just as simple as me making the contribution and then saying to my accountant, hey, I want to claim my contribution as a tax deduction? Unfortunately not. Um, there's another step in between. Well, actually, there's another seven steps um, in between, <laughs> which is you've got to find this form, an ATO form, send it off to the fund, to claim it as a tax deduction, wait for them to confirm it back to you, and then you can claim that money as a as a tax deduction, um, and get access to that fifteen percent tax rate on that on that money. That's the thing that often people don't know, um, even if they are contributing to super, and that amounts to you know leaving a bit of a tip on the tax man's table. Um, mm-hmm. If if you're making that sacrifice and contributing that money into super, but not getting the full tax benefits um, that are available to you on making that contribution. And, you know, with, um, with your platform gig super, do you take some of that heartache out for people or are they still, still a manual process that they've got to do? No, that's it. So we've, so we've solved that, um, for, um, people because we're focused exclusively on the self-employed. Um, it's just a click of a button within the app. Um, so you can just simply tell us within the app that I want to claim all of my contributions as a tax deduction then at the end of the year, we'll send you a receipt. And all you need to do is take that receipt off to your account at tax time um, and and make sure you claim those tax deductions. Great. And, um, you know, I know your ideal client is self-employed and, you know, many people listening right now are self-employed now. Why that niche? Um, You know, super, there's lots of companies out there that they're doing uh, well. Why did you uh, specifically target this niche or this vertical? Yeah, and those those other super companies are, are doing a great job. Um, <laughs> you know, our our superannuation system here in Australia is the envy of much of the developed world. But as I mentioned before, that that whole system and those super funds themselves were primarily built for employees who have contributions made on their behalf by their employers. Um, and so, you know, for them user experience um, isn't all that important because the end user very rarely needs to actually log in. They really only need to log in to check their imbalances and and maybe do something with their insurances once every now and again. Whereas for self-employed people, they're responsible for educating themselves about how it works. They're responsible for making the contributions themselves. They um, are responsible for claiming these contributions as a tax deduction. So there's a lot more to, you know, the, I guess the user experience requirements of a self-employed person than there is a, for an employee. Um, and so that's why that's what we felt they needed a product specifically built for them um, because they have totally different needs 
um, than you know the ninety percent of the working population who are employees. Yeah, look, I think it's a it's a great uh, a great thing you're doing. Um, you know, when you first came up with the concept, were you surprised that no one else had gone after this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, it's not it's not a secret. Um, so ASFA, who is the industry body for super super funds in Australia, right back in 2012, published a paper, um, you know, calling out for super funds to do more for their self-employed members. But you know, I guess they've they've, they've had their focus in other areas. Um, and so yeah, absolutely, it it, it did um, it, it surprised us, and particularly when you consider the way that work is changing. So you know that traditional. I mean, I know a lot of your listeners probably resonate uh, with this, that, you know, that traditional, um, you know, nine to five employer employee working relationship is, is, is breaking down and, and people are oh, side hustle was entered, you know, entered into the dictionary this year for the first time. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the way, the way we work is changing. And so, you know, the way we need to save for a time, it probably needs to change as well. So, you know, surprised, I guess, that the super funds haven't, um, haven't sort of worked on that, but it's a, it's a, it's a theoretically different problem that we're solving. Um, as I say, they're, they're focused on the employers and employees, um, whereas we see it, you know, a totally different, um, need, um, and a totally different problem that we're solving. Yeah. And I know, you know, a lot of people listening at the moment are, are probably comfortable running a lifestyle business. I, I know I'm certainly that. And, you know, I've invested in other companies. I've been an angel investor, but I've never thought of myself, you know, building a big business. How have you and Martin got your heads around the fact that this is going to be, you know, a big business and, you know, take, take me through that thought process of how you became comfortable with that. I don't know that we ever really um, sat down and and um, became comfortable with it. I mean, I, I I my path was I started working in a small business, and mm. in, in a small business, you know, you're there to serve the community um, because if you don't serve the community, your customers won't come back to you. Um, and in a way, I see us, you know, doing exactly the same thing, just for a bigger community um, here. Um, you know, we're here to sort of serve the self-employed community. Um, and if we don't do a good job of it, um, you know, people aren't going to, we're not going to have a business. Um, so, you know, I guess, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't see it as a hugely different, um, hugely different uh, uh, concept. Great. Okay. Excellent. And look, before we go into the next section, which is the live section, I'd like to give some secrets behind what's happening in LinkedIn. So we've been doing a lot of work in LinkedIn and we're getting some brilliant results. And what I'd like to do is share with everyone listening those tips so that you can get a head start on LinkedIn, which is a bit like a gold rush at the moment for B2B. It's uh, a great place to be. So all you have to do is go to blgdownload.com and what we will do is share with you those, those key tips that the 1% of LinkedIn users are using around the world at the moment. So if you enjoy it, also uh, share it with other people as well. And uh, you'll also have an opportunity to find out about a group that we're running at the moment as well, which is getting between five to 10 leads every month for people. And that leads turns into money, which can go into gig super in the future. So uh, the next section, Peter, is the live section. So tell us about some of the daily habits that help you be successful. Yeah, so for for me, I mean, as I said before, um, you know, I'm a big believer in um, in in habits and the power of um, good habits and and how difficult habits can seem to start, but how easy they are <laughs> once you've started them. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot about habits. You know, getting back to what am I good at, what am I not good at. Um, you know, organisation is my uh, is my weak point. Um, and for me, to-do lists are totally critical um, in order for me to stay on track. Um, and third is that one that um, we sort of, again, spoke about before was, you know, about not beating yourself up for things you're not good at. Um, you know, accept that you're not good at some things and work out strategies for how you can make sure that um, you, know, you minimise the impact of those uh, weaknesses. 
Great. And just some tips on doing that. I know you've got a, some career advice, but people sometimes people say, I just don't know how to f- work out what my strengths are. What, what tips or advice have you got on how people can really narrow down on what they're best at? Yeah, I mean, so for me, it was a, it was a coach. Um, and that coaching was um, backed with psychometric testing. Um, so uh, Myers-Briggs and you know, Herman Brain Dominance, um, uh, those sorts of psychometric tests for me, I guess I've got an analytical um, type bent. Uh, and so I found those um, tests incredibly valuable for me understanding um, you know, where, my, where my strengths lie. Yeah, and you know, you, you're building this brilliant platform. You've got a lot on your plate. On on average, how many hours do you work a week? Do you know, I probably work exactly the same number of hours that I used to work in in corporate life, um, which is a lot. I don't know how many, um, <laughs> but um, you know, the big difference for me is I get to choose my hours. Um, and yep. so, you know, I'm always home to you know have dinner with the kids, um, and then you know, kids go to bed. Um, you know, open up the laptop, and and away we go again. And, uh, yeah, that for me is sort of the sustainable uh, balance um, between the two. Great. And uh, you mentioned Zoe before. Zoe's listening right now. What would you like to say to her about the support she's given you through this journey? <laughs> I mean, she, uh, as I said earlier, yeah, I definitely wouldn't, have been, wouldn't be here without, um, without, without her support. And I think, I think that is similar to anyone who takes this leap right um off into um self-employed land um and uh yeah i guess it's a it's a huge thank you um in and it's a really it's it's one of those thank yous where you know words don't do it justice um that um you know it's a it's a life-changing thank you Brilliant. Well, the next section is the give section and what's a cause or a community you're passionate about and why yeah, as mentioned earlier, I mean, the, the community that we spend our, the, the most time thinking about and we're here to serve um, is the self-employed community. You know, I think there's, there's lots that we can do uh, in terms of supporting that community, both in terms of re- retirement savings and, and making that habit of saving for your future easy, mm-hmm. um, but also more broadly in, in helping to um, educate um, people in the way that they um, you know structure their businesses and we won't do that directly but um, you know that's something we want to build out over time is 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 a greater level of support um, for these for these businesses great well look for the last section is the action section where I'll just ask you some questions and get some rapid fire responses so the first one is what are your top three personal effectiveness tips uh, uh, think about habits uh, to-do lists and um, focus on your uh, focus on your strengths and minimise your weaknesses. And uh, yeah, okay, brilliant. And what's some tech that you couldn't live without in running your business? Oh, HubSpot. Um, we're uh, <laughs> we're HubSpot evangelists, and um, it's an incredible piece of uh, incredible piece of tech. Great. And what's your best source? of finding new ideas to help improve your business. Another thing that I've figured out through the coaching process. So I'm a, I'm a, I like to process by talking. Um, and so, you know, the best source of any new ideas is to grab someone's ear and, uh, and talk about it. Excellent. Fantastic. And uh, I'll leave the big hitting question to the last one. So what impact do you want to leave on the world? If we could, if we could, you know, at the moment we think about seventy-five percent of self-employed people aren't contributing to super, um, and as a result, haven't got as much in retirement as as what they probably deserve. Um, so, if we can make a big dent on that um, percentage, I'll be a very um, satisfied and 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 happy uh, that I've contributed um, to the self-employed community. Fantastic. No, that's a, a great vision indeed. So, uh, look, uh, you can find out more about Peter at gigsuper.com.au. And if you're listening from around the world, it won't be long, I think, until Peter's uh, going into your neck of the woods. But I know he definitely wants to start in Australia. And also, you can find him on his LinkedIn profile. So, just type in Peter Stanhope. 
We'll have all the links to everything he's mentioned and also the links to both of those in the show notes. But Peter, I just wanted to thank you for coming on the show, but also thank you for having, I think, a, a brilliant platform that is going to add lots of value, not just to the people listening today and our BLG community, but to all those people that are self-employed. And uh, as you and I know, it's a, it's a wonderful path. It's something that you know, can really have a, a massive positive impact on your life. And to know that they don't have to worry as much about their financial position as they're running their business is real peace of mind. And I uh, just want to yeah, shout out and say thank you for creating this great platform. I'll be uh, very much looking forward to it when it uh, launches. Oh, Paul, thank you very much for having us. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. We should do it again sometime. For sure. Thanks, Peter. Have a great right, thank time. you. Cheers. That was such a great episode with Peter. There's lots of things I learned about Super. I knew a lot about Super from my corporate days, but as a self-employed person, I wasn't that well informed. So I hope you got enormous benefit. So my top three takeaways was ask yourself the right questions. I think that was a, a really good question that Peter asked himself when he went through the career advice, etc. So I think do that and that accounts for anything you're doing in life. The other is play to your strengths, know what they are, whether it's through a psychometric tool or other things, and then get other people to support your weaknesses. And the third one is the refund for contributing to your super fund. I didn't, wasn't aware of that, and I think a lot of you listening, especially the Australian, Australian people listening at the moment, will you know just can't wait to get on Peter's platform to learn more about that. So you can get all the show notes and all the links that I've mentioned at Build, Live, Give, Dot com. And if you'd love to be a guest on the show, just click the email logo on our homepage and send me a note saying that you'd love to be on and why. And the last thing is please take action to build your business, to fund your lifestyle and to give back. Thank you for listening to the Build, Live, Give podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review. It would mean the world to us. 